Let's talk about the intercultural communication project that you're building each week. My apologies, I cannot record on my computer right now, and I am away from my desktop, so I hope that this lecture video is clear. If it's not, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm so sorry, I'm going to make you a little seasick too because I'm changing the screen back and forth. If my lectures are never clear, if they're blurry or something, just send me an email. I always check, but... You know, everybody has different technologies, so I want to make sure everybody's getting access to them clearly. So technicalities aside, this is the PowerPoint that is going to help you build this project, but I always like to lecture over it as well, just because it is a technical project, it's lengthy, it's a business plan. So each section is so important and has its own requirements. So I want to just kind of explain it in a little bit more detail. So... You've already submitted topic proposals at this point, so I'm not going to go into this part where it gave you topic ideas because you were already planning that last week. So by the time you're reviewing this video, you already have an approved topic. So, and this PowerPoint follows the guidelines, the official assignment guidelines, but this PowerPoint goes into much more detail. So when you're working on the report, use this PowerPoint as a guide. And there's going to there's going to be a lot of files for this project. So if you ever can't find something, again, just let me know. I'm happy to help you out. So these are the required sections in the project. There's a lot, right? So because of that, I teach this project where you build it in parts. So this week, we're only going to focus on the first half of the report and then the following week I'll have a lecture on the second half. That way we kind of take baby steps with it because you have a longer time with this project so easing into it is better but you have this PowerPoint available to you if you are the type who wants to keep working through it. You have you can always stop into my office hours or schedule an appointment with me and I can help you with the second half of the project if you're ever ready to move on before a video lecture is available. So this lecture video is only going to, we're only going to talk about the title page, the cover memo, the table of contents, the organization background, and the country profile. And then the following week I'll cover the rest. So let's talk about these sections. And I'm going to go back and forth. Again, I'm so sorry if this gets a little seasick with the back and forth. Um, but I have a student sample that you're going to review this week. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth to show you an actual example to contextualize it a little bit more. So your title page, this is technically an APA formatted, I'm not going to say paper, right? Because you're in a professional writing class, but it's, you're using sources. So we're going to follow APA format. So the title page, you know, give, give it a unique title, include your name and the course, of course, of course, but if you want to format it as an APA formatted title page, you can. My guidelines don't specify that, that you need an APA title page, but you can go ahead and do that. So I'll put a tutorial video on how to format in APA format for a title page. But let's go to that sample and let's see here. Again, I'm so sorry I'm jumping back and forth. Uh, this is the student sample that we're going to go back and forth with right now. Now, this isn't an APA formatted title page, by the way, so you can keep it as simple as this, where you have a page number in the top right corner, the title of your paper, of your project, I should say, your name, of course, in replacement of student sample, and the course. This is not an APA formatted title page. It's just a simple title page. You can keep it like that, or you can follow that APA tutorial that I'm going to provide for you on Canvas. Okay, so that's a simple section, right? That's not too hard. So let's get into the more important stuff. The, ne the next section is the cover memo. You all are used to, co to memos. So a lot of, some parts of this project, you're revisiting certain objectives that you've already practiced in the course, which is nice since this is the final project. It kind of combines certain things together that we've learned already. 
So of course it's a cover memo. It has to be in memo format. So you all are getting you all are pretty comfortable at this point with memo format. But if you want assistance, think about that PowerPoint memos that we reviewed earlier on in the semester. I can help you find that. It's in the earlier modules under memos. Feel free to email me if you want me to help you find or email you that PowerPoint. Uh, just in terms of format. This memo is directed to your team because they are the ones traveling abroad. This cover memo kind of summarizes briefly what the point of this project is. Why are you traveling to another country? The cover memo kind of summarizes that information for your team. The cover memo should have two things. It should have the mission statement of whatever organization you're representing. If you're representing a business, what is the mission statement of that business? If it's a nonprofit, what are their goals for the community? If it's a research group, what are you trying to research to accomplish? And those are the, you know, the main, if it's a school, what is the mission statement of the school or university? Remember that we already practice mission statements, so you're kind of comfortable with it, right? Where a mission statement, it is, depending on the company it, or organization, it's one, two, five sentences, anywhere in between, that states the goals and objectives of your organization, if you want to include the vision statement instead, vision statements are the future outlook. So what are the future goals that your organization hopes to accomplish down the line? A few sentences of that. You can include both, either or. So you should have the mission statement of your organization. And then a brief description of why traveling is occurring. This is important because your team is thinking, why are we going here? What's going on? So that describes it. So the cover memo is pretty short because it's just almost, it's almost a title page in itself where it says, hey, this is, hey team, this is what's going on and why. So keep reading to find out more. So let's take a look at that sample. So again, make sure it's, this is page two, it's the cover memo. Make sure you have the word memo or memorandum. She included her company name up here at the top. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. She included their logo. Two, whatever your team is, whatever you want to call them. Um, this student is representing, she was a CEO of this fashion company. So the team that she was taking was the technologists, designers, and illustrators. So if you want to give specific titles to your team members, that could be cool. Or you can just say, you know, the general mission or the general organization name, they're the team. That can be too as well. From your name, of course, include your name instead of student sample. But don't forget to give yourself a title here. She titled herself founder and CEO. Why? Because you're a person of authority if you're sending a memo. So it boosts that ethos, that credibility to the project as well. And then of course include the date that you're sending this packet, this business plan out. And you know the subject is a few words that summarizes what this project is. So here's her mission statement. She says adding value in the fashion world by introducing designs inspired from certain places and giving our designs a modern twist and presenting it with elegance. So she has one sentence. You can add more. Mission statements shouldn't be longer than five sentences, though, because you want to think of concise writing. One thing I wanted to add, you can represent an organization that's real, that already exists, and you're using that mission statement that they already have. If you want to create a newer one for them, you certainly can as well. Or you can create your own organization. Either or. I like to keep this as open as possible for you all because you all have such different majors, interests, and things like that. So it's entirely up to you. This is not a real business that she represented. She created it. So you can do that as well. But some of you all, I've looked at topic proposals already. Some of you all are representing already real existent organizations or businesses and that's more than okay too some students feel more comfortable choosing something that already exists because then they can kind of get that stepping stone with who the company is they already know the company pretty well other students just want to create something off the top of their head it's entirely your own preference and then again a paragraph of why 
traveling is occurring. Why are you going? What's the need? And the need should only be about one to two sentences because you're going to go into detail with that in the other sections. But here she says, you know what? Our mission statement is we're getting inspiration from other places. So because of that, we are going to Japan. We're going to Tokyo, a few places in to in we're going to a few places in Japan. And why? Because we want to gather new fashion techniques and new, perspe new perspectives from other cultures to carry that with us in our company. So just the need. I, and that's what's nice about topic proposals, by the way, is some of the questions I ask you in topic proposals are ways that you can reuse for the actual project and kind of clean it up a little bit. Because I asked you in the topic proposal, why is traveling occurring? What's the need? You kind of summarize that already. So, and some kind of closing statement. If you have any questions, you know, you can reach me here. And that's the cover memo. Remember that you only need that contact to, from, date, subject at the top. Don't put anything like sincerely or from or anything like that because that's a letter and email format. So keep the genre conventions accurate and make it look like a memo. But that's the cover memo. So let's hop over to the next part of the report. Table of contents. Table of contents, since this is a formal report, it's a few pages. It's six to ten pages, somewhere within that range. It's a lot of information, right? So a table of contents gives that structure to the report. And it also makes it a little more professional in format because it is a business plan. So what a table of contents does, whether you know, you've seen it in a book maybe before, is it lists all the sections in the report. So the audience can jump around and know where to find certain information and it has the page numbers. So if you want a little sample, this is a sample of what a table of contents looks like. You title it table of contents and then all think about the main, the section requirements in this report and you would list each one of those and then you include the page number that you can find it. And it's, it's kind of helpful, it's pretty nice. Uh, so if you notice in the sample, Page three is her table of contents. Uh, some students ask, wait, do I put the title page? Do I put the memo on there? Because it's it's before the table of contents. I would because it's all part of the report still so that they know where everything is. A um, little bit of formatting issue here. You know, uh, no, actually she indented this to include the mission statement that, that you could find that with the memo. So that's why that's indented there. But all I'm looking for are the main sections you can get creative and add more. You know, she did the subsection here with the mission statement, but the main sections listing where everything is and titling it table of contents. So that's a pretty quick section too. All right. Organization background. Organization background is really important actually for me. So I'm not your primary audience in this project, your primary audience is the team traveling abroad. You're helping them prepare. But I'm also your audience to consider because I want to learn about this organization too. So the organization background is almost where you don't think about the primary audience, but you think about me, your secondary audience, so that I can gain an understanding of who you're representing in this report. And it also just makes it look official as well. So the organization background, it shouldn't be long because, because it's to your secondary audience mainly, it's to me. But it should have the following information. A brief description of what your organization is, meaning, you know, is this a school? Is it a nonprofit? Is it a business that provides services? Um, is it a research group? You know, what is the type of organization? And what do you offer? Do you offer products to sell? Do you offer services to sell? If you're a nonprofit, what community do you help and why? Is it, spe is it specific areas around town or is it one specific community? Um, what are your future outreach communities that you want to expand and help? Things like that. If it's a research group, well, what do you research? What are you trying to what are you trying to figure out and solve and help again for the future? Or is it just to gain data? Any kind of brief information. And also, where are you currently located? Even if you, so this is actually a really important section, regardless of whether you're representing an organization that is real and already exists, say, for example, Walmart, that's a real organization that exists, or 
if you follow like the student did and create your own organization, you still need to explain what type of, you know, what is this vision that you have? Um, a lot of students who create their own organization are usually business majors because it's something that they want to go into in the future. doesn't mean that, you know, you don't have to be a business major to create your own organization, but that tends to be what I, that's the trend I tend to see. The section should be very concise because it's more just for me to, to understand, you know, who this organization is. So if we go to page four, her organization background, KFH, she told me when they're founded, where, when they were founded, where, and what they, what type of services they have, fashion, and they design with a modern twist. They come up with designs about the real world. And their main location is in New York, but they also have a secondary location in London. So she was real creative with this. She had a lot of fun, I could tell. Uh, how many how many people are on the team? I like that she added that. You know, you could mention how many teams, how many staff members. Even if you represent a real organization, I don't expect you to find out how many people in the U.S. work for, you know, um, Best Buy or something like that. But just a general summary a quick google search you can maybe find out too i like that she added that um and what do they focus on you know she's telling me about fashion but fashion's really broad so she says they really focus on women's clothing and um you know they want to have comfort but also have elegance included in their line as well but if you notice it's about a paragraph you know don't have less than a paragraph a standard paragraph is five sentences or more so keep it within that range but it's just to help me you know who is this team who is this organization that you're representing country profile all right now this is actually this is the heart of the project this section so it's going to take time but I like to cover it in part one, just so you have, you're introduced to it, so you have time. So now you're going back to that primary audience, which is your team. They, you're assuming they've never visited to this country that you chose to travel to. So this section is very audience aware. It prepares them before departure that's it, with information that they need to know about. So it's actually one of the only sections that should look very traditional in terms of looking a little bit more like an academic essay in a sense, and I'll explain why. Um, you, you don't really want one lengthy paragraph. You can use transition words to guide the reader to each paragraph. Transition words are words like first, second, next, moreover, to continue, you know, words like that. I'll include a chart if you need me to to give you some ideas but there's two parts to the country profile so make sure to include both because that's an important part of your grade so two parts the first part you should list remember if you have a number you list so bullet points is fine at least five communication characteristics about that country to teach your primary audience consider using communication styles that are different to what you're used to what the U.S. customs are used to, so that your audience should know and prepare prior to departure. Uh, there was a discussion board that you worked on where you had to go to a link and you had to click a random country and kind of share some factors about that. That link could be really resourceful to use in this section for that part. I'll also provide a few more uh, um, other websites that provide just communication characteristics in that country. And what I mean by communication styles, you can share nonverbal communication styles. You know, how do, how do locals feel about eye contact? Is it, is it something they practice? Are they not comfortable using eye contact? How do they feel about certain hand gestures? Is the okay sign appropriate? Is the thumbs up appropriate? Um, some students with certain countries they choose, for example, they mention that you can't, sh you can't show the bottom of your feet. That's considered rude and offensive. You can think about just nonverbal. You can kind of mix and match. Um, is, do they need to stand a certain, certain feet apart? Well, ironically, we all have to right now, <laughs> but in a general conversation sense, do people talk up close to each other? Do they use hand gestures? You can also focus just on business practices. Do they arrive on time to meetings? Is it appropriate to show up a little late, early? I had one group one time when they, this used to be a, a project for the group more, but one group chose to talk about 
how one of the factors they shared was that they the country was expected to show up late to meetings. It was just a sign of more of a relaxed environment. So they mentioned that as well. So my only gripe with this, she did an excellent job, but she could have listed this to break this paragraph up because it's makes, it doesn't bring, it doesn't utilize that concise writing practice that we want to focus on in business writing, but it also just breaks up the paragraph a little bit. So she mentioned they're going to Japan. They're very respectable people and they use a lot of body language. So she mentioned that. And she said also, that's a good transition word, also, they take long pauses when talking. They also tend to have low voices, so not to scream, not to be loud. They avoid pointing with fingers. They also bow out of respect. So those are her five characteristics. But this can be condensed by just having a brief introduction sentence that says consider the following characteristics when you arrive and you can list it in bullet points and that breaks this paragraph up and it helps your audience so that they retain the information a little bit clearer as well but that's part one of the country profile I'm going to provide resources to help you all out with that I also tell students try just googling you know communication styles in and whatever your country is you can find some really resourceful links. I used to do it as an in-class activity, actually, in my computer, when we were in computer classrooms, and students would immediately find really cool websites that help with that. So at least five, you can put more, but, you know, consider sharing ones that you're not used to, because it, why do we have to include this? Because your audience should know, right? Especially if they've never been, not to do certain things or to make sure they're following certain customs. It's really a great way to be respectful of culture and just be audience aware. Now, the second part of this section, the country profile, is really important as well. Why? Why? Why are you going to this country? Uh, your audience wants to know. Your team wants to know. And you almost have to not persuade them, but it helps you build and boost your credibility as a team leader that you took the time to do a little research and tell them why you chose this country. So you need to find at least two sources that proves the need. Um, and this is where you use APA in-text citations to prove that you, were fa you found and used sources as well. I, have a, I used to have a template, but uh, I can help. What I mean by that is that was easier in a face-to-face -face class. If you need help with APA, please don't hesitate to workshop with me during office hours or during or scheduling an appointment. I'd be happy to work with you one-on-one -on -one with what, once you find sources on how to use that. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Disregard I, this I need to fix. I used to require three sources. It's two. You all have two. Always follow your official assignment guidelines. You all need at least two sources for the need. And that's something I asked you on the, pro, on the topic proposal as well. You know, what is the need? Why are you going? Um, what's the point of that? So this is, you know, you need to prove the need. Um, there's different, you know, examples of proving the need based on your topics. But from what I've seen in the past, uh, I had a student represent a nonprofit that provided free books and education to lower income communities. So she traveled to a country where literacy rates were lower to help out and have a literacy camp. So she found sources about the literacy rates in that country to prove that they were low. Um, so, you know, some students, I had a student represent a band and they wanted more exposure outside the U.S. So they chose a country where the music scene was similar to their band. So they found sources about the music scene to prove why they should travel there. Uh, hosting a sporting event, a country hosting a, a similar sporting event in the past about why it should occur again as well is something. Fashion industry why you should relocate there. You know, it's just, I'm not going to go into each one because it depends on your topic. If you need help brainstorming, you know, I'm happy to, to help you out with that. Um, I have no idea what I mean by a second PowerPoint. I must have had this in the past. So I'll find that and add that to Canvas again if you need help just brainstorming more with the need. But think about my feedback and what you said on your topic proposals because I had you kind of brainstorm ideas as well. So let's, let, me, let me stop talking about that and hop over to the sample again. 
in her country profile, she starts to prove the need here, where she says, um, uh, she talks about the fashion in Japan, and she says Japan has their own way of style, and then about the Harajuku style and what that means, and she found a source that talks about the social movement behind it, and you know she's using a source here because she has that APA in, ah, she has that APA, again, I'm so sorry if you're getting a little queasy, she has that in-text citation here to prove it. So that's her first source. I'm just going to kind of skim so we can find her sources. She has her second source here. That's a direct quote. So she's got it there. What is this quote talking about? Okay, so she's saying she wants to expand the, the popularity of it. She wants to perform and share their own type. So everybody's collaborating. You know, the, the style of clothing her company uses, their style of clothing, that kind of collaboration. And then she's got one more. But she wants to take the famous trees of Japan and use that as a form of fashion as well. She talks about the Japanese spirit with this source. So she found three sources. Again, you only need two. You can find three if you want. Be awesome. But if you notice, right, this section... Again, for part one, list the communication styles. It's a little bit more efficient and audience aware. Then the need, you know, where you're using and integrating and synthesizing the sources, that is where it'll look like traditional paragraph research. But it's still not too lengthy, right? It took about a page and a half. Not bad. So let me hop over here really quick. Oh, sorry, I'm going to scroll fast again. Uh, types of sources you find can vary from any of the following. You know, if it helps, if there's certain news articles that prove the need about that country and why you're going. I don't expect you to read books, but if you have a book that you know that could connect really well, hey, you can use it. Websites, but be careful. Make sure they're .edu, .gov, and .net. Those are more credible. You can still use .com, but, you know, is the website designed well? Does it have a clear purpose? I have a separate PowerPoint about sources, so we can kind of get into that. If any kind of census data about a population helps, that kind of connects more with nonprofits, I think, if you're trying to help a community out. Videos, but again, consider credibility. Documentaries, if they're credible. If you're interested, it's not required, but you can conduct your own research by interviewing a professional related to your topic or creating a questionnaire just to distribute to the everyday person. I can put that link and share it with everyone. I can put it on Padlet. I can put it on, uh, I can send it to your class. Um, you can you can create questionnaires if you have social media. It's kind of cool. You can create surveys that have the audience answer questions and you can collect the data that counts as a source you don't have to do any of that though that's called primary research that's not required uh, again like I said I'll have a source powerpoint that goes into this but at least two sources that prove the need so the country profile is probably going to take the most time because you need to find sources right but that's part one of your project so I'll put another student sample if you all, you just want to kind of compare and contrast, but she did an excellent job with it. And that's the first half of the report. So keep in touch with me about how it goes. I encourage workshopping with me and stopping by office hours, but, or even just emailing me and letting me know how you're doing and just keep in touch with me about it.